You're gonna do this little greeting routine. Sit. I always walk her up to the person, have her sit. Whoops, sorry. That was my fault. I pulled on a leash. Have her sit, step away, hand the person a good high value treat. It's his little uh, dog pepperoni treats here we're using. And she waits till I come back, and then I say, Go say hi. She goes and she accepts the treat. Come. Call her back to come to you. Good. Right now, like in the beginning, because of her issue, sit. Her issue's back with you. We haven't had that happen here, of course, but because of that, just allow her to go over, accept a gift from a stranger or somebody that she formerly wasn't good with, and then call her back to come like this. They don't have to pet her. Just the fact that if she's going to go over and meet a bunch of new people like that, nope. She pops up before you release her to say no, and she'll usually go back. You can also just pull up just a little bit, and she'll go back. Go say hi. I'm just going to do it three times. She gets the gift. The person doesn't pet her. Come. Good. The petting can come like this. Now you pet her, okay? Sit. Because I've done this greeting routine with this person a number of times and a bunch of other people as well. Go. Now you can pet her. And you see how it can be after you've done this a few times. Come. But you see she's still a little bit shy. Good. But there's no nipping. So it just gets better the more you practice it. But this is what we've been doing every day with multiple people, this greeting routine. Do it exactly the way we've done it. You always approach the person. The, the person never approaches the dog. That will put her uh, in a stressful state of mind, of course. A dog that's like this needs to be sent to the person. That person needs to have a little reward, a little treat there. Don't touch the dog. Just get her used to approaching a bunch of different people. Something good happens every time. You're orchestrating this whole thing with the come command and the sit and the wait while you step away from her, give, give the person a treat. Always do this greeting routine in a neutral or more neutral open area. The worst place to do it is inside your house. She sees somebody coming in there and she's inside her domain, so to speak. And that's the worst place to introduce a dog like her. It's better your friends, your people that come over, whoever they are, family, they're waiting in the driveway on your yard or wherever. When I come and deliver her, I'll, I'll pick a, a spot that's best to do it at your place when I see your place. Um, but an open area outside, uh, more neutral than in the house, in front of your house at least, on the sidewalk, maybe on your driveway, it's the best place to do it. And then over time, you can move it inside, but only after she's been good with multiple people at your house and she hasn't nipped for a while. But this is a great way to get the ball rolling and have her uh, start perceiving new people differently or perceiving people that, um, you know, in general, she doesn't know that well in a, in a good light and thinking it's safe to, uh, to be around them. So we're always having her sit at boundaries, gateways, doorways, curbs. We're about to go out on a walk and encounter uh, things that she's not good with, cars and other dogs. So I'm always starting the walk this way. She wants to pull over there for some reason, but you always have to make sure she really waits. She pops up, you say no. And you can do this little, this little do-over circle. You turn her away from her mistake and reset her. So we're having her wait at every boundary like this before we go on the walk. Okay, you have her come out. She always she's nervous, she rushes. The camera person is not helping. Sit, just the fact that the camera person is there pointing something at us. I always have her sit and wait at the curb as well. And I even practice this little sit stay here before we cross the street. Okay, and then we're gonna cross the street. And you know, she's just using, she's just wearing her regular collar. There are training collars, certain things that we could use to, to uh, have her pull less, but we're not doing that right now because she was only here for 10 days or 11 days, something like that. And so we just kind of started this whole training thing. But you see, if she's pulling and you tap and release, tap and release, greatly releases the pulling, sit, what I meant to say was it greatly relieves the pulling. Even that makes it better. Go, and then you free her when you start the walk. <coughs> After you stopped at all the boundaries, and she gets free time, and she can just 
you know, sniff and pee, whatever she wants to do. We have a dog that's gonna sneak up on us. Make sure you catch this whole scene. Make sure you see, show the dog. And then we're gonna go this way and you have to back up, okay? Show everything. Come! It's a dog that just snuck up on us. Here, silly, right here. There you go, good. So we have this little dog. Come! She wants to go over there, but she's not good. She's not being aggressive. A lot of the reason is because we didn't let her drag us out of the house. We didn't, we didn't uh, choke up and, you know, like restrain her. It's a loose leash and we're practicing come, the come command. Good. And it, sometimes little dogs are a trigger and other times big dogs are a trigger. Come, and we're getting really close. Good, and I'm not seeing aggression with other dogs because we're using the training. It could be this simple for you. Just always practice the come command. And over time, like we've been doing this for about a week and a half, over time you see that her desire to do anything inappropriate becomes very manageable and it's really not even there anymore. Come. Well, we're gonna practice, good girl, we're gonna practice with a big dog as well because maybe her trigger is with a bigger dog. We're gonna have a dog, a large dog, pop out right in front of us here, and she's not even gonna see the dog come out until it's like almost right on top of us, and we'll see, you'll see how she's reacting now to seeing a dog, being surprised by a dog in the street. Oh, good girl, she did turn back to me, good. I don't have her in a sit stay. I am just, she's just standing there, come. But you know, we have been working with dogs every day for the last week and a half or so in the same way, practicing her come command. Come. You know, let's say the dog just pops out and she's, you know, she's so skittish and nervous that you have to treat her with kid gloves. But if that were to happen to you, call her away and maybe you go on the outside of the car while that dog comes this way and just, you know, use the come command though to um, draw her away from that dog and there's no correction it's use the command that has her turn away from the dog come just like that good she gets a little reward and every time that you do this you start she starts building up uh, for, for uh, lack of a better term she builds up a fuse like it's like this fuse gets longer and longer and longer I'm not seeing any reaction she is staring come but if she stares, good. And I had to kind of tap her because she didn't respond right away, but that's okay. It's always gentle, gentle but firm. We're never jerking her, we're never uh, correcting her. She doesn't come to you when you call her. It's just come, a tap, backing away, good. Every time that we call her away from another dog on the street like this, her desire to do what she used to do, what you described to me, of uh, being, you know, having a problem with other dogs in the street, getting overstimulated, barking, whatever she was doing. Every time we do this, it gets a little bit less, starts to go away because we gave her something else to do in place of that, something she'd rather do. And it just creates this, um, you know, coming from her, this feeling of irrelevance. It, obviously, the dog is pretty much irrelevant. So this is what you want. So you want to keep practicing this when she comes back to you. We're in a really busy place as far as when it comes to cars, and usually there are a lot of cars whizzing past. Come. I see how, we see what's happening. Good, we see what she, she gets really excited when she gets near cars, and these cars are gonna just be flying past us even though it's a 30 mile an hour zone. They're always going 50. So there's one coming up since I know she's this way. Come, I'm gonna call her away. Good. As it passes by, you see the way I'm using the food? I'm using the food in a way to desensitize her to cars. Come. Good, if a car's passing by, like the one before this car, it was passing by this way really closely. I made sure, like this one here, come. Good. I made sure that she had her little reward in her mouth as it passed by. Timing is really important when it comes to this stuff because you don't want to give her the reward too soon or too late because you want 
as it passes by, you want her to have that, that relaxing feeling. That one's coming right now. Come, and she can tell, you watch her, she sees it coming, but she chooses to get a reward, and there's gonna be one, one coming right after that one, right there, good. She's eating rewards out of my hand with her, her back turned to these cars. See how she's good, now she's got it. That one's really close, this one here is really close. You see what I'm doing? And she's choosing to turn away from them because I'm paying her to do that. Come. Good, and you're using your come command in this situation as well. So this is how far we've gotten with the cars in this just week and a half or so that she's been here with us. And uh, she needs a lot more work with cars. Come. Good girl. But you can see how far we've gotten in just a short period of time. Come on, this way. And just keep drawing her. I ran out of treats, but see, once you don't have treats, good. You can still pretend like you do have treats and it will work in a pinch if there's an emergency like I'm having right now. So we're gonna leave this area now. <laughs> I'd like to have her for the full training program time so I could make her really good with other with cars. But this is how far we've gotten and this is exactly what you wanna do. Come! Good girl. It's exactly what you wanna do when she comes back to you to keep this going. It started now, you just have to practice this a lot for her to, to change for good. Okay. Sit, we always have her sit as we lead her up to the mat. She's waiting for me to pat her chest and say, go to your mat, walk over, say down. She's done this every day since she's been here the last 10 days or so. So she knows exactly what to do when you reward her for staying in a down. No, make sure that she waits. Good, see all I did was I said no and I pulled back. So see how I'm rewarding? No. Good, say good when she takes the little reward. Notice also how when I step towards her, I swing in like this. Good. I don't, I'm not going like this and tempting her to jump up, which that's what will happen, especially a dog that hasn't done this for very long at all. So we practice a downstay, which the basic downstay is where she can accept you walking around both ways. Good. And not pop up. A lot of dogs can't do this. They can't accept their owner walking or standing behind like this. They're going to pop up out of their downstay. But she's gotten that so far. And I'm, I've worked up to doing this thing every day for five minutes. Good. Because it's really, it's a five minute downstay and soon if you continue to do this, she'll have this downstay without the mat. But you always want to practice with the mat. For example, um, you know, we're still at the phase, because she's only been here a little while, we're at the phase where we're just create, creating our own distractions in this yard that is, uh, you know, protected from the outside world. So I can create my own distractions, good, and get her to a certain level to where she's able to handle real wor world distractions outside the gates here. But you can do stuff like start by just maybe dropping the leash and walking farther away doing a bigger circle around her. Always coming back in front. Good, to reward, use a high value reward for this, this mat exercise because these things are not easy for her to do. And as you know, she didn't have much of a stay. See, I'm walking just in different places, walking behind her farther away. And soon, I would be, you can do this at your house, going in and out of doors, leaving the yard, coming back, things like that, working up to doing that. Good, and then in your house, working up to like having her be in a downstay in your living room or somewhere close to the front door, and then you going outside and leaving her alone in the house in a downstay and coming back and rewarding her. We're going outside, ring the doorbell, knock on the door, and come back in and she's down. So that's where this leads to in a few weeks. But this exercise is very important to do because it's five minutes of 
focus and calm. She's only thinking about one thing. She's thinking about staying here no matter what because she knows that if she pops up before I release her, I'm just gonna put her back. And also she likes getting paid for learning this and this learned behavior is very important for her to know because this exercise, even though it's really important to have a down stay, it's a great thing when you can say down, the dog stays there and doesn't get up. But we're really even more after the byproduct of what practicing this every day affects her. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can kind of see it out on the street with the dogs and the cars. Just in the short period of time she's been here, not, not even really half of the training period that I usually do with a dog, she's already less reactive. <coughs> Excuse me. She's not, pop, she's not like on, on like a trigger where as soon as she sees a car or as soon as she sees a dog, she goes after them. And um, the byproduct of practicing these stays, down stays, is that every time you release her, a little bit calmer, a little bit less reactive. That's really what we're after. So doing this really helps you with her issues out there on the street as well. So always come back next to her, pat your leg and say, okay, step forward. Come on, it's okay. Sit, have her sit, lead her off the mat, have her sit, and then release her. Always, this leash is always loose. You're never restraining her. Pat her chest and say, go, and she's free. <coughs> always pick up this mat, because she can only go on this mat with your permission. She only comes off this mat with your permission, so don't leave it down on the ground where she can run on it, hang out on it. She's gonna wanna hang out on it. <coughs> But part of the power of this exercise is that she can only play this really fun game, and in her mind this is a fun game, she can only play it when you allow her on the mat. Only play it with you. You, you orchestrate the whole thing, and she has no idea she's being trained because she likes doing this.